convert to rectangular point to graph it, and uh, or sorry, convert the rectangular point and then look to graph in it. So this isn't going to be very fun to graph, um, at least on a rectangular form. It might not even be good on polar form either. But let, let's go through, let's do the basic stuff we know. Do we know which quadrant this is in? Second, right? Regardless of whatever numbers, I think the negative positive, hopefully you guys understand. All right, that is in the second quadrant. It's somewhere right here, right? Now again, if I want to be able to remember what we need for polar form, we need to figure out r and we need to figure out theta, correct? Now it's very important for you to understand. r is basically the distance away from the origin. So what I'm going to need to do then is create a right triangle. Agreed? So this is like what we did in trigonometry. Uh, you could understand that that is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yes. In this case, since I gave that to you, like, that's a good way to like, recognize that. And then you automatically know that's 45 degrees. Um, but again, it's very important for you to understand that this is 45 degrees. Yeah. Right? That's not what we're looking for. We want that as our theta. Right? We need r and theta. Theta is from standard form here. So well, the reason why I'm telling you this is, yes, we could do r squared equals 2 square root of 3 squared plus 2 square root of 3 squared. I'll do a little bit of math in my heads here. So that's going to be 2 squared is 4. Square root of 3 squared is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Um, wait a minute. You can just multiply Four. by square root of 2. What? Because it's 1, 1, and square root of 2. Right? Isn't it 8, 8? Yeah, but I'm saying if you're just, follow, I'm just following this, it would be 4 times 3, which is 12. So that would be square root of 24. I'm sorry, that's equal to 24. And then r is equal to square root to 24. Yes? We can, we, which we could simplify, but we can just leave it like that, because remember I said this chapter, you don't need to worry about simplifying, right? Um, then we could figure out the alpha, because we can't figure out theta right now unless we know what alpha is. Now again, you already recognized alpha, and that's awesome. But some people might not recognize alpha, or the numbers aren't going to be that easy, right? I mean, it wouldn't be the same number over the same number. Now, this one is easy, though, because they are the same number. So therefore, you recognize that tan inverse of negative 1, which you guys would get. If you guys plug that into your calculator, you would get negative 45 degrees or negative you know, whatever decimal it is for that. But again, we need to understand this. Again, why is your calculator giving you negative 45 degrees? Because of the restrictions of tan inverse, right? It's giving you this angle down here. So you just need to understand that's because your calculator is restricted in the first and the fourth quadrant. So technically, this is um, 45 degrees. However, if we're going to deal with this in radians, then we really want to call that what? Pi over 4. And then how does theta relate to that angle? So from here to here is pi over 4. All the way around the circle is pi, or 4 pi over 4. Then theta is? 3 pi over 4. So your answer would be the square root of 24, comma, 3 pi over 4. Now, could we graph this on polar form? Yeah, what's the square root of 24? Well, I don't know. What's the square root of 25? 5. So would you bet then the square root of 24 then is probably like 4 point something, kind of close to 5? So let's do five rings, and we'll just go outside of that. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, and then let's follow three pi over four, which would be right there. So your point is probably like somewhere right there, as far as like an estimate, right? I think as long as you have the location of the